So much to talk about, but yet so little time to get through it all. And this is a reply to a hope to things on the web, emic, as well as Adobe PC, yet again. The, the fucking backward compatibility is so bad, Windows 7 is so bad, that they gotta boot people into a virtual machine to use XP apps? That's how they're making their business people happy? We're gonna let you upgrade to Windows 7, but we know you're a business and you still use Windows XP, so we're gonna let you boot into Windows XP virtually. And here's what... And... I found that it's broke iStat menus and a few other apps, but I believe this is a good thing. Because now, uh, just to let you know, things on the web uh, that was over a minor bug. Apple gave all those developers their seeds in advance to help let them upgrade immediately. And as soon as Snow Leopard came out, the upgrade came available in almost instantly. So. It was pretty f quick and pretty fast, and it was repaired, and it was just a simple bug. And I don't know what you're talking about it being incompatible between one operating system to another, since yes, the uh, Leopard Snow Leopard is written in Cocoa, why all the other Mac OS tens before that were written in Carbon, but technically, iStat was just wasn't working just because of a small little bug nothing more nothing less ignore that okay now emic apple did have a virtualization for their system os 10 a long time ago in fact apple doesn't have just not one not two but three different types of virtualizations one of them is dead it is just doa the one that is dead is classic in classic you can pretty much reform it as legacy basically because it was uh, very buggy very poorly written but it did its job and it ran OS 9 on an OS 10 platform through a virtualization and boy did it have bugs it had major major bugs and it was just a clusterfuck in its own way but it did work but uh, yeah it had massive amounts of bugs but when oh but when Mac switched from the power PC processing Max onto the Intel Mac pros and so forth classic died because classic can't work on an Intel machine so goodbye classic but another virtualization ran certain power PC processors and that was called Rosetta and this allowed uh, old applications that were running under another application I'm going to talk about I mean another developing tool called Carbon but Anyways, Rosetta was uh, it. It was good for enabling uh, applications to run that were supposed to run under PowerPC processors to run on the Intel computers. It was a translation, I guess, and it really and it did its job pretty well uh, because I was able to run a game called Quake Three, and it still runs on my Mac even today. Quake Three and it's because of Rosetta is the reason why I can do this and it's just very well made of course the other reason why I'm able to run Quake 3 is Carbon and even though it was in the Carbon was a developing tool that allowed applica uh, people who built applications under Carbon to run from OS 8 and 9 to OS 10 now Apple's no longer supporting Carbon, even though it's still in OS 10, but it's there. Uh, it, but they're just no longer supporting Carbon. But it, it's still in OS 10. It's still in Snow Leopard. It's just 
not present there anymore. Now, on to the next one. Inside, because in order to do swap out the drives as you need, and they need you to use that TechSmith Camtasia software. Like I said, you just simply put the Leopard OS hard drive, you know, in your system, and you're good to go. When people from the Discovery Channel want to stop by and see how your editing is going using Final Cut Pro, like I said, you just actually put in that hard drive with the Snow Leopard OS. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I, for, oh, I forgot. That's right. You got a Mac Pro, don't you? You got that beautiful case that looks really nice inside. Oh, yeah. Now, I know why it looks nice inside, because in order to do that scenario I just set you up with, yeah, you're going to have to unlatch it. Your clients are probably going to see the inside of your computer. You're going to look like a jackass getting on your hands and knees to swap that hard drive in and out. Okay, Adobe, you shut yourself in the foot with that one. And I, I, I don't know why the hell you didn't even bother researching or to even talk to Mr. Bit before you said that. Mac OS X can support dual booting. It's been doing that for years because of when they switched from OS 9 to OS 10, they had to support dual booting. And that function still stayed with it. That's why Apple has something called Disk Setup, genius. And since this is a Mac, since I'm on a Mac Pro 8 cores, you would have to understand that my uh, Mac Pro has four hard drive slots. And I can have Leopard on one hard drive and Snow Leopard on another hard drive. And then all I have to do is click on Startup Disk and bingo. I can boot up. In fact, I already have a secondary hard drive, but I don't have any operating system on it. I just have 10.6.1. But I could have Leopard on one hard drive and Snow Leopard on the other because of the fact that my computer has four hard drive slots. Mr. Bit can't reboot his uh, Mac so he has to keep it on constantly so it, it, even if he had to switch out his hard drives he would still have to shut it down. That's why he can't upgrade. But disk setup, I can also hit the tab button by the way that will allow me to switch operating systems. Apple allows me to do that. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.